So the JBL Portibox 710 is just an overkill speaker for personal use. But personally, I still really like this speaker because it looks and sounds great. Now, if you're actively looking for a large portable Bluetooth speaker, personally, I do feel that the Partybox 310 is going to be the better investment here. But if you're actively looking for something that is overkill, the Partybox 710 is definitely going to deliver. And today, we're going to see how the Partybox 710 stacks up to another personal favorite speaker of mine, which is also overkill the third generation soundbox. Now, this isn't going to be an apples to apples comparison, but a lot of people still want to know how these two speakers compare. Regarding pricing, the Partybox 710 retails for $800, whereas the Soundbox retails for $1,000. However, I have seen it go on sale for $850 sometimes. Nonetheless, the short of it is, if you want something big, if you want the better sound, and if you want something that's still portable, then the Soundbox is the way to go. Whereas the Partybox 710 is going to look great just in your man cave or by the poolside. Nonetheless, both of these speakers are great and they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch shelf down below. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know I can be very particular. So I'll only set my name on something that I'm really proud of. Now, first, let's talk about the design of these speakers because they're very different from one another. Now, first, there's their size. The sound box is significantly smaller and lighter than the 710, weighing in at 34 pounds, whereas the 710 weighs in at 62 pounds. Now, regarding portability, even though the 710 does have built-in wheels, so you can roll the speaker around, since its handle is fixed, it can be a little awkward to roll the speaker around. And even still, sometimes moving the speaker around can be a two-person job. Whereas with the Soundbox, this speaker is much easier to move around because it's both smaller and lighter. Now, when it comes to materials, the Soundbox has silicone ball corners, so you can throw the speaker down and not have to worry about it. It's also got a poplar cabinet body with an aluminum frame and steel grill on the front, which makes the speaker durable and lightweight. Whereas with the 710, this speaker has a mostly plastic body and metal grill on the front, and plainly said, this speaker can be a scratch magnet. I've also got to point out that the sound box has a speaker stand mount on the bottom, so if you want, you can easily raise the speaker up, whereas with the 710, there is no speaker stand mount. And when it comes to IP ratings, the 710 is rocking an IPX4 rating and the sound box is rocking an IP65 rating. Basically, both of these speakers are going to be okay if they get splashed on or rained on, but definitely you don't want to get them drenched. But technically, the Soundbox is a little more resistant to water than the 710, and it's also got some resistance to dirt and dust. So overall, personally, I prefer the Soundbox's lighter and more compact design. It just makes moving the speaker around way easier, even though it doesn't have those built-in wheels. However, something the Portibox 710 has over the Soundbox is this light feature. And this light feature alone could be a deciding factor for some people. And I really can't blame them. This light feature really is sick. It's bright and dynamic and you can control it through JBL's Portibox app. If you're looking for something to visually liven up your man cave or poolside, the 710 is going to easily get the job done. Now, I know there are plenty of other speakers out there that have built-in light features, but I really don't think that any of them look as good as this one. Now, even though the Soundbox doesn't have a built-in light feature, something that it does have over the Partybox 710 is that it has a built-in battery, and you can easily swap this battery out for another battery. And this is a very important feature to point out because there are a lot of other box speakers out there that have built-in batteries, like let's say, for example, the Partybox 310. But you can't easily swap it out. Now, the Soundbox has an advertised battery life of 40 hours when it's playing at 50% volume. And trust me, 50% volume on this guy is already loud enough. However, if you were to use this speaker at max volume, and trust me, you will rarely get to use this speaker at max volume unless you're some recluse that lives in the middle of the mountains, then this speaker has an advertised battery life of 5 hours while playing with its stock power EQ. 
Now, personally, I just use this speaker while in its stock power EQ, but if you were to use this speaker with its base plus EQ, then your battery life is going to drain a little faster because the speaker is going to have more bass. And if you were to use this speaker while in its indoors EQ, then your battery life is going to last a little longer because it's going to have less bass than its stock EQ. But with all that being said, just like how with the light feature on the PartyBox 710 can be a deciding factor for some people, the built-in swappable battery in the sound box can be a deciding factor for some other people. Now, even though there are plenty of other box speakers out there that have a built-in battery, namely the PartyBox 310, the major pro the sound box really has going for it is that you can easily swap out its battery if you've got multiple batteries. But now let's talk about the ports on these speakers because they are pretty different. Now with both of these speakers, if you want, you can plug in a pair of microphones through their quarter inch inputs and do karaoke. Now personally, I just hope that you don't scare your neighbors with your singing like mine do to me. Now, if you want, you can mess around with the sound of your microphone with both of these speakers. With the party box, you can mess around with the bass, the treble, and the echo. And you can do so directly from the control panel up top, or you could do so through JBO's party box app. Whereas with the sound box, you are going to have to use the app. But the really important thing to keep in mind here is that with the party box, these EQ settings will only take into effect onto your microphone. These EQ settings will not take into effect onto the music itself because you can't directly change the EQ of the party box outside of the bass boost button. Whereas with the sound box, you can customize your EQ to your liking. However, it's very important to keep in mind that the party box only has two quarter inch inputs, whereas the sound box has two XLR combo inputs, meaning that you can either plug in an XLR cable or a quarter inch cable. And the sound box having XLR inputs is great because this means you could either plug in more instruments into it, or you can even plug in a mixer into it, which could be great for someone that likes to moonlight as a DJ. The very important thing to keep in mind here though, is that none of these ports will supply phantom power. Now, even though I do think that it's a shame that the party box doesn't have XLR inputs because there's just so much horsepower here that's just going unused. Something the party box does have going for it is that it has a USB-A port which you could either plug in a USB stick into and play music off of it or you can plug in your own devices and charge them up. Now personally, I think it's great and all that the party box has a USB-A out port, but I still really wish that the speaker had a USB-C port which you could either use as a wired connection and or use it to charge your own devices because most phones these days now come included with USB-C cables instead. However, if you want, you can always just use a wired connection with either of these two speakers because they both still have your standard 3.5mm audio jack and they both have audio out jacks. So if you've got a spare speaker lying around, regardless of size or brand, you can always daisy chain them up to either of these two speakers and get them to play in sync. And when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, both of these speakers have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. But when it comes to audio codecs, the sound box is strictly using SBC, whereas the party box has support for both SBC and AAC. But now let's talk about actually listening to music with these speakers. Regarding speaker setups, the PartyBox 710 has your dual frontward firing woofers, dual frontward firing tweeters, and an exhaust port that shoots out the back. And with the PartyBox, you've got your left channel and your right channel. Whereas the SoundBox has dual frontward firing woofers, a single frontward firing tweeter that's nestled in a tweeter horn, which is supposed to help with dispersion, and its exhaust ports shoot out its sides. However, with the sound box, its top woofer plays both mids and lows, whereas the bottom woofer only plays lows. The idea is that this is supposed to create a more full sound profile, and in short, I think it does. The sound box sounds significantly more open than the party box. Now, both of these speakers sound great, but they sound and perform very differently. The party box sounds balanced, but its standout characteristic is just its sheer amount of bass. Seriously, the bass on the 710 can get violent because it has a ton of physicality to it. And you've also got two different bass boost levels to choose from. Now the sound box also has a ton of bass to it and you can feel it, but it's much cleaner and ears more towards the audible side than the party box. 
But now we're going to jump into the sound test. Both of these speakers are playing at 44% volume and the sound box is running off of its internal battery. The party box is playing while in bass boost level 1 and in order for my recording equipment to not freak out, I had to use the sound box while in its indoors mode, which does reduce its bass. But nonetheless, the sound box still has a ton of bass in this mode, but it's not as physical as the party box. So, like you may have just heard, both of these speakers sound good, but they do sound different. The 710 has your classic party box sound signature of strong mids so that vocals are elevated and the bass comes in strong when it has to. Whereas with the sound box, it does have a slightly brighter sound signature. Now, if you want a warmer sound signature out of your sound box, you can always go in and customize your EQ to your liking. Personally, I just use this speaker while in its power EQ, but you can always make your own. But from a performance standpoint, the sound box does sound more open than the party box, and it does maintain better clarity at higher volumes. And not to mention, it has really clean audible bass. Whereas with the party box, its bass is much more physical, which can be a lot of fun, but it can get overpowering at times, especially if you use it indoors. Like I mentioned in the past, if I'm gonna use the party box while indoors, I use it with its bass boost turned off. But overall, personally, I do prefer the openness and clarity that you get from the sound box over the violent bass that you get from the party box 710. But like I've mentioned a few times already, both of these speakers sound good, but it all comes down to preference. If you want violent bass, then go with the party box. And if you want more openness, then go with the sound box. But finally, there's max volume. Now both of these speakers get incredibly loud. 
but the sound box does get louder. And this is very impressive because the sound box gets louder than the party box, even when it's running off of its internal battery. And yes, during this max volume demonstration, the sound box is using its stock power EQ. But finally, let's talk about pairing these speakers up with other speakers. Now, with the sound box, it's pretty simple. You can wirelessly pair up to five Gen 3 sound boxes together, and you can either get them to play in sync or in left and right stereo mode. However, there is no backwards compatibility here with older sound boxes, but personally, I do feel that being able to pair up to five sound boxes together is plenty. Whereas with the Portybox 710, there is some fragmentation to look out for. Now, with the Portybox 710, you can wisely pair it up to either one other 710, 310, or 110, and you can get them to play in sync. But if you want to get left and right stereo sound going, you are going to need two of the same speakers. But the really important thing to keep in mind here is that you can only wisely pair a total of two party boxes together. If you want to get more than two party boxes synced up, like I did in my B-roll, then you're gonna have to daisy chain them up. But it's also very important to keep in mind that the party box 710 will not wirelessly pair up to any older party boxes, like either a party box 300 or party box 100. And it's also very important to keep in mind that the party box 710 will not wirelessly pair up to any of JBL's smaller party boost speakers. So if you've got a JBL Boombox 2, an Extreme 3, a Charge 5, a JBL Flip 5, or a JBL Pulse 4, they will not wisely pair up to the Partybox 710. Now overall, the 710's TWS works fine, but it is rather limited, and personally, I just wish JBL would just bring Party Boost to their Party Box speakers. But at the very least, both of these speakers do have those audio out jacks, so you can always daisy chain them up. But with all that being said, both of these speakers are overkill, but they both truly deliver and they're both great for their intended use cases. The Portybox 710 is an awesome speaker that's going to look and sound amazing in your man cave or by the poolside. The light feature on the 710 truly is amazing. But more importantly, the speaker sounds great and has very violent bass that will easily redecorate your whole house. But from a sound quality standpoint, Personally, I still prefer the sound box. It just sounds more open and has better clarity. Now, even though there is no light feature, I really prefer the sound box's smaller and lighter body. And having that built-in battery is great because you can take the speaker anywhere. But also, you're going to be able to take better advantage of the horsepower the sound box has to offer versus the party box. Meaning that with the sound box, you're going to be able to plug in more instruments or even a mixer thanks to its dual XLR combo inputs. And also, through its app, you're going to be able to directly adjust its EQ to your liking. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know, I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something that I'm really proud of.